Hello guys, today we're going to be doing a little review of these speakers. These are the Focal Sib Evo Atmos speakers. So why are they unique? They're unique because they have an extra driver at the top, which is meant for Atmos purposes. So this here is actually a two-in-one speaker. Now I'm making this review because other reviews that I've seen are reviewing this speaker as a package. Whereas what I'm gonna be doing today, I've been using these as surround speakers with the Atmos enabled. So this review is about how good these speakers are as surround speakers. Why might you wanna do it like that? So why might you, why might you not wanna buy the whole package? And the reason is because if you want your front speakers let's say your left, front, left, center, and right, to be a different brand or a different quality. Um, you might want to use it for stereo speakers. These probably won't be the best. There's lots of other options out there. So yeah, that's why you might want to use these as surround speakers because the surrounds, they're not so important when it comes to fidelity. Even though it does matter a bit, it doesn't matter like it will do as the front speakers okay so i bought these i used them for about a year as surround speakers with atmos enabled so why might you want to consider these it's uh i mean focal are selling this to people who want a decent sound quality and an all-in-one solution for surround and atmos and the main thing i would say is that you're probably going to want a tidy setup so this might be going in your living room and you don't want to upset other people in your house so yeah i would say for that it's um you know it's good and that's that's the target market so considering that's the target market what are the good things about this speaker first of all i would say the design is uh is quite nice so here's the front here's the sides as you can see it's kind of like a egg shape or like a dome sort of shape Here's the back. As you can see, at the back, you have two sets of terminals, one for your surrounds and one for your Atmos. So the design, I would say, is quite good. Here at the bottom, you have very, like, a, like an option for adjusting the tilt of this speaker. And I'm guessing here you can probably add your wall mounting setup if you want to wall mount these. So that's how you do that. What else can we say? Uh, gloss back black color, I would say universally accepted color. Uh, another good thing about the design is the grills. As you can see, the grills, they're, I think they're, I think it feels like metal. Or is it plastic? I think it's plastic actually. Um, the grills, you don't, you can't remove them and there's no need to remove them. So these underneath here, they're all protected at all times. And uh, yeah, I think uh, sounds, like a good idea considering the market. The second thing I would say that's good about these is the build quality. They are 3.25 kilos each. So not the heaviest of speakers, but at the same time, not the largest of speakers. This here is a five inch driver. This here is a three quarter inch soft dome tweeter. So considering the size of this speaker, it feels quite solid, it feels quite solid. I mean, it's not, doesn't feel like it's MDF construction or anything like that, but it's quite solid. It, it seems like quite an inert design. So um, yeah, I would say the build quality for the price is pretty good. The other good thing is that it comes in with a with a built-in like a, like a speak like a feet, like feet pair of feet for these speakers, and they're made out of like thick rubber. This is all rubber here, and that's good for isolation. You don't want any uh, loose energy. From the speakers going into your furniture or going into the room because that would upset the sound characteristics of your room so i think that's a, a good thing that right there um, the drivers themselves this is what focal call a polyflex driver five inches in size as mentioned earlier three quarter inch soft dome tweeter for those of you who prefer soft domes that might be something that you like to hear the third thing is the sound quality. Now, personally, I would say, I mean, I've actually heard these as speakers. 
um, not like surround speakers, but actually like front stereo speakers. I had a kind of play around with them. I would say that they don't sound too bad actually like that. Um, take into account what it is. Don't, don't, you know, expect the world, but it's actually surprisingly detailed in that sort of arrangement. I would say the resolution of the audio is a little bit like an entry level book bookshelf speaker, like a Wharfdale diamond or monitor audio bronze. It's kind of that sort of fidelity. So uh, it's not the worst, definitely not the best, but quite good. It won't have, now I'm not saying that these are as good as Wharfdale diamonds or monitor audio bronze. Don't, don't uh, get the wrong impression there. I'm just saying that the detail that they're able to serve up is on a similar level. These won't have the finesse uh, of those speakers and they probably won't have the bass extension of those speakers as well. So yeah, you can't really use them just as bookshelf speakers. You might just get away with it, but there's other options out there. Um, another good thing about the sound quality or the what it's able to do sonically is the bass weight. It's a, uh, it's a ported design. You might just be able to see there's some ports there, front ports. It manages to reach 65 hertz for the bass uh, extension plus or minus 3 dB. So uh, I think that's a pretty good level of bass extension taking into account THX recommend 80 hertz for a bass crossover. This can comfortably do 80 hertz and it can reach 65 hertz plus or minus 3 dB. So as a surround speaker, that's what you want. You want something with a decent extension. You don't want these, you know, speakers like that size and you need to cross them over at 120 hertz. You don't want anything like that. If you want a proper surround speaker, you want something with a good bass extension. So that's very good. What's another good thing about these speakers? I mean, it goes without saying they're Atmos capable. So, you know, as mentioned at the top here, you've got the Atmos speaker above. The frequency extension of the Atmos unit is 90 Hertz plus or minus three dB. So not the bassiest, but I mean, lots of Atmos speakers are, you know, their extension is like 100 Hertz, 110, 120. So it's not too much of an issue for Atmos uh, purposes. 90 Hertz extension for an Atmos speaker is not too bad, actually. What else about this? Um, does the Atmos work well? with this well I would say it does it you can definitely hear it like when you are going through the channels you can hear a distinct difference between the surround and the Atmos the Atmos like this Atmos speaker here it does kind of give like a like a, an effect like the sound is coming from above you almost almost similar to like a dipole speaker that's mounted up high it's got that sort of effect to it so um, yeah you can hear a difference between that and that it doesn't sound like it's coming from exactly the same place. So I think, you know, that's what you want in this market, don't you? So that's fine. Number five, um, I would say it's actually quite convincing as a surround speaker in its own right. So, you know, remember surround speakers, what are they there for in, in movies? Let's say they are there to play effects, right? And effects, let's say like gunfire or something like that, it needs to sound quite big, yeah? because at the front of your home cinema, you're gonna have quite big speakers. I would imagine at least that size. So if your surround speakers are like that big, it won't integrate well and the surround sounds, the effects won't sound very convincing because they'll need to be crossed over too high. So I think this here, this speaker is quite a dynamic speaker. It can pull off explosions and stuff like that uh, very well. The effects, they don't sound tinny. They don't lack really too much. Um, the bass, like I said earlier, the bass extension helps and the sensitivity of these speakers are 90 decibels. So for speakers this size, I would say that's quite sensitive actually, which means that you don't have to rely too much on your amplifier to boost these speakers. There's a, lots of other bookshelf speakers with lower sensitivity than that. So I would say that's a real plus. Another amazing thing, and a lot of people overlook this, it's available as an LCR setup. Now LCR means front, left, center, and right, okay? All identical. So imagine three of these like that. That's an amazing thing because your front, if you get three of these at the front, your front soundstage will be very convincing. It will be very uniform. Everything will sound more cinema-like because in the cinema, 
the front sound stage is, is basically they're using all the same speakers. They don't mix and match different speakers. Now, what are the bad things about this? First of all, notice that first, I'm going to assume that you're buying this. If you do want to buy this, you're probably going to want it for a small or medium sized room. I wouldn't imagine this would be the best option for a large size room. Notice the design of these speakers. They're monopole, which means they're basically the sound comes from here and, it di and it's direct radiating like that. So it's not dispers dis uh, dispersing in different directions. It's direct radiation. Now that can be a good thing, but for traditional audio, for, tr for traditional surround sound audio, you have 5.1, 7.1. Basically you might in a small room have something called the exit door effect. Exit door effect. Sorry, my phone just went off. Now the exit door effect is, you've probably heard this before. It's basically when, let's say for example, the center is over there. The center of the room is somewhere here to my left. And here is the speaker right next to me I don't know if you can see that but here's the speaker it's right next to my ears right now the thing is even if I turn this speaker down very very low my ears are still focusing on that in a movie your ears should be focusing on the front not here so what can happen is the exit door effect there's um, it's very distracting you can't focus on what's going up front um, and that really makes it difficult to sometimes like when someone is speaking on the TV and you, you know you can't hear the center speaker too much because you're hearing all this like these sounds surround effect sounds in the background and that can be a bit annoying for people who aren't positioned perfectly in the room so that's the thing that I think is a bit of a contradiction this is meant for maybe small medium sized rooms but in a medium sized and small room you know you everyone that's not directly center which a lot of people are going to be right near these speakers and it won't sound the best what else um, yeah I mean there is actually a fix for the exit door effect I would say and that's dipole speakers if you don't know what dipole speakers are I want to know a bit more I made a video on what they are and basically what the benefits are and why I still think that in 2021 they are going to be the best option for a lot of people so check the video out, I'll put it down below and you can go to that and have a look. What's another bad thing about this? I would say this it's the Dolby Atmos effect that's up on offer. Now, notice that the, the speaker, the Dolby Atmos speaker is at the top. Now, in a real Dolby Atmos setup, that speaker would actually be mounted on a wall or in a ceiling. This is like a pseudo Dolby Atmos effect. And what it's doing is it's directing the, the sound to the ceiling and it's bouncing it off the ceiling. So what you're hearing is a reflection of the sound. It's almost like it's pretending that there's a speaker up there. So the first thing about that is it's a bit more difficult to set up because now you have to think about the, how the sound is going to be angled onto the ceiling and down to your ears. So that's one thing that you have to kind of get right and it can take a bit of fiddling around. And the other thing is, no matter how hard you try, I would say the pseudo Dolby Atmos effect is never really the same as the real thing. I've heard both. So the real Dolby Atmos effect, when it's actually there, is a lot more engaging, a lot more dynamic, and you can hear the, the, the big impact it's making. Not saying that these are bad. You can get a bit of Dolby Atmos. I still probably, you know, if you, it's still probably better with it than without, but that's just what I thought I would say. But another thing about Dolby Atmos that's kind of a bit annoying is that there's a lack of content and that's my third negative. So the, the third negative is not really to do with the speakers themselves, it's basically what they represent, right? So these speakers, if you buy them as a pair, I think, I think they're like a few hundred quid. The price goes up and down all the time, so I'll check that out. But if you think about it, you're paying a lot of money for that extra Atmos speaker and there isn't actually a lot of Atmos out there. If you have a look at how much content there is, a lot of it's not backward compatible with a lot of devices people use, like the streaming sticks and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, why spend that money on something that you're not really gonna hear? 5.1 surround sound is still the most dominant uh, surround sound format today. So that's the thing that's a bit of a kick in the teeth, I think, because you spend the money and you don't get everything you pay for because there isn't a lot of out uh, a lot of it out there similar similar to like when 
if you guys remember this, back in 2005, 2006, when HD first came out on Sky, there wasn't any HD channels. There might have been like eight channels or nine channels, something like that, and you had to pay an extra 10 pound a month for it. And you had an HD TV, but you were sitting down watching standard definition on, standard definition on it all the time. So that's it's become a bit tiring in the end. It's a bit like that. So uh, yeah, and the other thing is, um, because it's Dolby Atmos, I mean, this sort of speaker will never get a THX approval. And the reason for that is THX have their own guidelines about what makes a good sound system in your living room. And they always recommend dipoles. So yeah, it's um, something like this it's, it won't be THX recommended any anytime soon. And those guys know what they're talking about when it comes to good movie audio. So uh, that's another thing. What's another bad thing about this? I would say the speaker terminals. It's quite bad because I don't know if you'd be able to see that, but these terminals the holes are quite small. And if you have normal sized, I would say normal sized speaker wire, if you are into audio, it won't fit in there. So you're going to have to specifically buy thin cables, speaker cables to fit in there, which is a bit annoying. And the other thing is, they're the old style spring clamp. So you press this button down here, see if I can show you that. So you have to press like that button there. Don't know if you can see that. There's two buttons, one there and one there. You press those and the clamps, they open up and then you can put the, uh, the cables in. And you know, I prefer banana plugs because I feel, I feel like the connection is better you know, so uh, a lot of people don't like that. So that's another bad thing. Now, what's another bad thing? Number five, my, f my fifth negative is the practicality. So I find that this type of speaker, right? I mean, it's, it is a very good idea because you have, you have two, it's a two in one. It's, it's, it's good because it's a two in one hybrid. But at the same time, it's a bit of a contradiction because just because it's a hybrid design, it doesn't mean, and it's, and it's a tidy setup, it doesn't mean that the cabling is gonna be tidier. It's gonna be exactly the same as any Atmos setup because you're still gonna need now two sets of cables, one to the surround and one to the Atmos. So if you're trying to make your living room tidy by getting something like that, what about your cables? So you're gonna to have to think about, okay, how am I gonna get this extra set of cables? To that speaker you might have to cut the walls if you want it invisible you might have to use um, trunking cable trunking but that doesn't always look the best so i think that kind of contradicts itself it's a design style product and the extra cabling that you need is not making it practical so i think really if this sort of product would be a good recommendation from me for people who want a nice looking setup i would say that focal or other companies they should start making these wireless and they should start making them active, right? So the amplifier built in, and then a wireless transmission between the amp and here. And that way, you can have the Atmos, you can have the surround sound, all in one. The, I mean, all you need is one wire to connect it to a, to a power outlet. And uh, I would say that that's a more simple solution than what's being offered up with these speakers, because all that extra cabling it is a bit of a nuisance and I think that's stopping a lot of people from buying this product. So that's just what I think. So let me know what you think down below. So let's conclude this now. To conclude, I think the Focal Sib Evo Atmos is a decent set of surround speakers. The Atmos comes all in one, so I think that's pretty good. It's got good sound quality. It's a big sound for its size as well and it's not the smallest, so you get a good surround sound. It's not the best Atmos you're gonna hear. It's, um, it's, it's easier access to Atmos though, which I think is good. It's much simpler to install than let's say something in a ceiling, but it still requires messy cabling, so that contradicts itself. However, I think the sound that you get from that is still gonna be better than a soundbar Atmos option. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like an upgrade to that. Not the, it's kind of in between the soundbar option and the full Dolby Atmos. So that might be quite a good thing for a lot of people. So yeah, 
that's what I think. It really suits small size rooms or medium size rooms. And uh, for that reason, I would probably prefer in 2020, 2021, I would still prefer a good set of dipole speakers for the same money. You're gonna get a better sound. The sound dispersion will probably be better. It'll be more suitable for a lot of different rooms and uh, different audio formats like Dolby Digital 5.1, DTS 5.1, 7.1. Pretty much anything that you get in a video game will be co compatible with that. So yeah, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Good speaker, but it's limited by the current state of technology. If you like the video, please give us a like and I'll see you next time. Any updates, I'll put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching the video. Did you like it? If you did, then please give us a like. Subscribe if you want to see more content. I'll see you next time.